Hey, my name is Cam, and I'm gonna give you a tour of my 2015 F550 service truck. Let me see. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brandon. I'm gonna make my video a sneer. So the tractor ended up being longer than we uh, expected, so we're gonna split it up into a couple parts for you guys. So we'll have links in the description and you can click on whatever part you're interested in. I think they're gonna separate it by the left and right side or the doghouse, I don't know. So if you're interested in one part or another, uh, let us know. And I think in the last part, we'll do a follow-up with you guys. Uh, you can ask any questions in the comments below on any of the videos and we'll go through and we'll answer whatever questions you got in the last part. All right? Yeah, sounds good. Sounds good. All right, this is uh, the welding cabinet. Got my torch bottles with the caps on. Always have your caps on. That's uh, you get uh, a ticket for that if you don't. So that's something I always make sure to do because if you roll over the scales and they want to check that, not that they have for me, but uh, yeah, caps on your bottles. Um, got my leads. I don't have reels for my leads yet. I want to get some because reels are the best. I like having a torch reel. Um, it just makes cleanup easier at the end of the day, you know, you have long days. I don't want to spend an hour cleaning up, you know, hoses and leads and all that stuff. Uh, the welder's tucked in the back, if you can see that back there. Uh, it's a little tight, but you'll see everything on this truck's pretty uh, tight and packed in. So, yeah, we've got the welder and it's just a Trailblazer 302. And that's in the doghouse in the center section. And I just got the controls cut out in the front here so you can access it. Um, yeah, this is my, uh, I guess, uh, consumables, parts. Uh, I got rolls of wire, little rolls of wire. Uh, you know, I try to kind of keep enough to do repairs. If I have to do any major, uh, like I've remade harnesses, that kind of stuff, I have bulk wiring at home, bulk supplies at home in my shop that I, uh, I do that kind of stuff with there. But for in the field, you don't have time to fabricate a harness from scratch always. So you keep what you can. There's not room for everything, so it is what it is. Uh, loom, more loom. Uh, usually just random parts from old jobs. <laughs> Some material, random steel bits. My welding rods I keep in here, my SOS kits. Um, and then just, yeah, all the drawers. I got uh, some welding tools, some more random parts. Yeah, just common stuff. I don't really keep a lot of spare parts other than the common things you might use. Uh, there's some of these like plastic fittings like the on the def tanks and the fuel lines. Um, got uh, hardware. So I try to keep everything kind of organized. It's uh, things tend to rattle around in the service truck and all these little dividers, the washers slide underneath. So I keep them in bags if I can. It just kind of keeps everything organized and separated. So you're not searching for one thing. Um, this one's the opposite. All the washers slide everywhere. You can see if you look in there, everything kind of is everywhere. Got uh, caps and plugs. You always need lots of caps and plugs because uh, you go through them. They end up getting stuck on a cylinder. You send it out and you don't get them back because they give you plastic ones in place. So this is all considered kind of consumable, I guess, you know, to the job. Yeah, you want to keep things clean too. So I try to keep my uh, caps and plugs fairly clean. I don't like having a big mess of junk and scungy plugs because I don't like putting that on my customer's machine because you know it's dirty and the machine's got to stay clean um, yeah more consumables small hardware uh, yeah just random stuff c-clips roll pins that kind of stuff you don't use it super often but uh, you know my my thing is I'd rather have and not need it that's why some of them are still in the plastic and probably been in there for a while but you know, or I just replenish the kit, I buy a new one, whatever. Some plastic fittings, hose clamps, that kind of stuff. More caps and plugs, some plastic ones. That's usually what I end up taking off of a, a cylinder when it comes back and I just throw them in the drawer because it's always handy to have some. Uh, more washers, kind of specialty washers, some thick uh, fender washers, ceiling washers, some grommets, that kind of stuff. More random consumable hardware. Yeah, woodroof keys, that kind of stuff. Up here, I got my, my welding helmet keep that in there because the torch cabinet gets wet so I keep it in this cabinet uh, otherwise your gloves get moldy uh, then I got my electrical kit so this is where I keep all the connectors uh, heat shrink connectors typically I use that kind of stuff for field repair you know when replacement's not an option 
you repair it. That's uh, kind of what we do. So, Deutsch kit. And I keep uh, weather pack and a few other uh, OEM style connectors on the truck. I like doing things that way, you know, like I don't just like throwing a butt connector in it if I can, you know, do a nice clean install or a nice clean repair. Uh, a lot of the OEMs use Deutsch stuff. Uh, you can buy all the tools you need to crimp it and it just gets a, a factory looking repair versus something something bojangy with scotch locks and, and wire twister things. So uh, these are plastic caps. Those are scungy. If I'm doing like a big job, like a valve bank, and I wanna, you know, or pulling something off that has a lot of ports, I don't have enough steel caps. Uh, I keep the plastic for those kind of jobs so I can plug everything off, uh, keep everything nice and clean. Uh, that's a huge part of what we do is keeping things clean. The machines work in the dirt, they're dirty all the time, but everything inside, you know, on your engine, your hydraulics, even electrical stuff, you want to keep everything clean and sealed. That's a big part of what we do. Um, this is like a, you know, I'll just pull this out to use it like a tray. But uh, this is just random electrical parts. You know, you squirrel stuff away, you keep things like solenoids, random stuff, some coils, brand new coils. Um, connector pieces, like I said, I got a lot of these DIN connectors, OEM stuff, um, relays, different types of relays, because some of the uh, Japanese and Korean machines and whatnot use uh, different style of relays than what you get in uh, a North American machine. Just gotta be, kind of cover your bases as much as you can. Um, yeah, there's some bulk wire and uh, like bigger cabling up top there too, so like battery cable and stuff. Um, Try to keep a tape measure on both sides of the truck and in a few different compartments because something I hate looking for and a lot of guys probably hate looking for is a tape measure because you always want it in a hurry. <laughs> you just want to go measure something up quick and uh, you don't have a tape measure so I keep a tape measure there, I keep a tape measure on the other side and keep them in you know a couple of random cabinets, it's just something I just do. Uh, yeah. This is, uh, yeah, more consumables, O-rings. Uh, this is pretty much all O-rings and a couple other little hardware kits that don't fit in those drawers. Uh, I kind of slide them all underneath here because it's a little cubby space. It kind of keeps things out of the way. Um, I keep things packed tight so it doesn't move around. <laughs> You're always at a premium for space. You know, there's not a lot of room. So you pack things tight and you kind of, you know, tetris, tetris it all together. And yeah, that's how it goes. Uh, big wrench drawer. If you haven't seen this before, this is actually something I picked up up an old guy that I worked with was just, you know, using this um, hydraulic hose wrap. I got a lot of extra, so if you want some, you can come and grab some off me sometime. But no, it works great for organizing your wrenches. It's cheap and it just keeps them standing up. I hate having wrenches all over the place. I hate looking for shit. I want to find my tools quickly. Uh, a lot of times, you know, I run to my truck, I grab what I want and I know where it is. And when I'm done, it goes right back to where it belongs. You know, everything's got to have a home. That's, uh, yeah, just something I've always been into. Kind of stems from my aviation background. Like everything's got a place. So yeah, these are like hydraulic line wrenches. I got a set of those um, open end wrenches. These are, these are super handy. Uh, we're doing hydraulic lines. I mean, every every heavy duty mechanic's got these. And then just big wrenches. And then the big socket drawer or seal drivers. <laughs> that's a that's a mechanic joke. Because <laughs> uh, a lot of times you end up just using them for seal drivers on big seals. Um, yeah, bearing drivers or whatever. Uh, so I got a lot of big sockets in here. Uh, three quarter drive and up, one inch. Yeah. It's all big stuff. This drawer's heavy, so I don't know if you saw that, but it's uh, got a lot of weight. Uh, things up here, I got like my torque wrench, uh, like a three-quarter drive torque wrench. I have a torque multiplier on the other side, so if I have to torque, you know, I, I can torque fairly high by hand. With that and the multiplier, anything else, then you start getting into specialty, uh, like hydraulic torque wrenches and that kind of stuff. Uh, slide hammer, heavy slide hammer, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the big... The big chooch is right there. That's like my one inch uh, gun. That thing, that thing kicks up. I like that. It works real good. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's bottle jacks. There's stuff like that. If, like I said, you fit stuff where you can. And then I 
throw my spill kit in here because you always got to keep a spill kit on a lot of sites. I carry this and then I actually carry a whack of pads or a, a buttload of pads in the back just because I'm, you always go through them, you use them a lot, they're consumable too. But I throw this spill kit up here so I don't get the uh, impact in the dome when I open the drawer or open the door, right? So that's, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's uh, part of the reason this is up here. You know, you kind of, some of it's always makeshift. You kind of do what you got to do to keep things organized and keep things from flying around. Uh, that green bin, I think it's just a bunch of um, like extra parts, uh, random stuff, some lights for my truck, spare stuff. Got to carry spare parts for your own truck. I think I got a belt in there for my engine too. Like, you know, sometimes you got to keep yourself going too to keep other people going. So it's all part of it. Uh, this cabinet, random hardware fittings. I haven't gotten the chance to really organize this yet, mostly because there's so many different hydraulic fittings. It's hard to organize that kind of stuff all and you know, by type, I'd need to pretty much take the whole side of my truck to do that. But uh, yeah, for now, it's a junk drawer. It's a, you know, just collection of random stuff over jobs that, you know, you collect, but you know what? It's too handy to throw out. Uh, you never know when you gotta, you know, do a, adapt something to somewhere else or, you know, do some kind of, whatever you want to call it, a bush fix or whatever, but you, you know, you, you keep that stuff on board, you know, I don't know, it's handy. I can't throw it out. So I don't throw a lot of things out. More hardware. This is all kind of like random hardware. I got a bunch of stainless, uh, big washers, guide studs, that kind of stuff, random things like that, just in these kits, just to keep, you know, them from rolling around and whatnot. Um, as much as you try to be organized, you end up with stuff kind of all over the place. So more hydraulic fittings. These are caps for like four bolt flange, code 61, 62, that kind of stuff. There's a random block of wood because it's always nice to have a random block of wood somewhere, which, you know, use it for smashing shit and keeping things from getting marked in your vise or something like that. That's kind of, I don't know. I just always have random stuff like that, I guess. These are guide studs. That one's fucked. Or, yeah. These are guide studs. <laughs> uh, Could have mentioned it earlier. These are just uh, tooling that we use to line up engines, pumps, that kind of stuff. Uh, especially heavy components. It's really handy to get some long ones like that. Uh, I haven't done it on these ones, but usually I cut a slot in the end to put like a screwdriver in to pull it out. Cause sometimes you, you put the component on if your stud's too short, you know, or it's in there too tight, you can't undo them by hand. So you put a little slot in there and yeah. So those are super handy lineup tools, that kind of stuff. You know, this is all the stuff that you make when you're, when you're doing this, you know, you make these kinds of tools and you hold on to them cause you never know when you need them again. <coughs> Uh, last drawer in here, more random junk, O-rings from jobs, you know, stuff like that, like uh, leftovers, you don't throw it out, you keep it and stash it away. I got some shims, little stuff, uh, track adjuster fitting. I actually got this cap that I modified for uh, hydraulic tanks, so I can put vacuum on a tank. You know, I um, actually use this a lot at uh, a particular dealership for doing particular repairs on fuel tanks <laughs> because we always had to change out this little bung on the fuel tank. So I was like, well, this is stupid. I'm going to make a tool up so that I can just stick it on there and pull a vacuum and swap out the part that needed to be swapped without having to drain the fuel tanks out, you know, unless the part already failed and the fuel was on the ground, which happens too. So um, straps, I kind of keep them all folded up. A uh, bunch of different sizes. Straps are kind of consumable to me, at least. I mean, I hate ripped straps. I hate that kind of stuff because it, you know, it's a safety thing. It's, uh, you know, it's you, they're 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 cheap enough that it's not worth risking, you know, for the safety factor. Like you buy a new strap when it gets, you know, worn out. And um, I really like these actually. These straps. It's a round sling. So yeah, these are sweet. I like these. There's the continuous loop. These are great for doing. Uh, cylinders i got some real long ones i got a few different sizes but uh, when you're doing hydraulic cylinders sometimes they like to spin because they're round and a regular strap you know these ones anything like round kind of slippery whatever you can choke them like really tight and like it won't spin inside it so it makes it handy for putting things on if you want to you know you get it set up on the ground and you go and crane it up and it's not going to start spinning around in the strap or anything like that so and then this is what i do when i put them away i fold them up because it takes two seconds and then you Stick them right back where you got them from because that's how it should be. 
organization, you know. I'm not super organized, but I know where stuff is and I know where my truck is, you know. So it's kind of nice to put stuff back where you, where it belongs, right? Uh, up top, I got a bunch of random kind of like oil sample, uh, suction gun, that kind of stuff. It's mostly oil sample stuff and random junk for doing that, I guess. I don't know, I got like my sample sucker. Uh, I got uh, a bunch of these super handy SOS kits. They come with the straw and everything in them. So like you saw my sample bottles earlier, I'm really big on sampling and preventative maintenance, that kind of stuff. It's, it saves you money in the long run. It's, uh, you know, it's something I'm really big on. I was always, it was always taught to me, you know, uh, in my apprenticeship that, uh, yeah, contamination, that kind of stuff, that's what kills machines. So yeah, I don't know, they're just super handy. A lot of the machines nowadays have these little uh, ports. You can plug that into and pull an oil sample, a nice clean sample, because your sample is no good if it's got dirt in it from you pulling the sample, that's useless, right? So there's that. Um, I got a bunch of plastic tube. I use a, a new piece of plastic every time I pull a sample with this thing, just because, you know, it's hard to clean that stuff out and make sure you got all the oil out. So why would I go and, you know, I pull a sample from one compartment, I reuse my tube, now I'm contaminating my next sample. So you stick a new piece of tube in, you pull your, your next sample out and you got a clean sample. Um, yeah. It turns out the truck video ended up way longer. So click here for the doghouse or here for the driver's side or here for the, yeah. <laughs> just have like links everywhere. Click just click, just start clicking somewhere. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually.